What's going on everybody? Welcome to T3G and today we're doing another budget build video as you can see in the description below. Today's budget is $1,500. Now before we continue I do want to say that some people seem to be confused when we use the word budget. We're using the word budget in the actual sense of somebody setting a budget for themselves if that budget happened to be 1500 3200 750 whatever it happened to be that's your budget some people are confused and looking at the word as we're saying oh this is a cheap build that's not in the set i can see where you're going for that because a lot of videos out there say budget build and it means cheap or cheaper or in a lower price bracket but that's not how we're wording it we're wording it in the actual sense of it's a budget that you set for yourself and that's what you do now that being out of the way let's go ahead and get right into what our fifteen hundred dollar build would look like this is what we would recommend to somebody or even by ourselves so let's get right into it right here we're going to start off with the motherboard this is the msi z set z170 uh chipset lga 1151 socket uh, this is for the new uh, L fifty one L fifty eleven fifty one. Sorry about that. This is the new eleven fifty one socket that's out right now for the Skylake Skylake CPUs. And basically, the reason I picked it is because it's all black, and we like MSI. We've had so far great success with MSI with our boards that we use, which is the nine seventy gaming motherboard. Although the nine ninety gaming motherboard from MSI looks pretty good too. Uh, which is something we might be looking into f before the new AMD socket. But that being said, let's stay to this build. I like it because it's all black. It gives you six SATA ports, which means you can definitely have plenty of hard drives in here if you need, if you're someone like me who needs a lot of hard drives. Of course, because it is a new socket, it does use the new DDR4 technology instead of the DDR from the last model round which means it's going to give you a little better memory, a little faster memory, a little bit more capacity. Uh, so that's definitely the biggest reasons why we're going with this. And once again, the reason for it being all black is because then you can work with whatever colors you want to do. So you want to do a red and black, a blue and black, a green and black, a white and black, you can go with it. So by having the motherboard just all black, you can mess with what colors the RAMs are and stuff like that. So that's another the main reason why also we went with this. Of course, now that we know the motherboard and the chipset and the socket that we're using, we're gonna go with the Intel Core i7-6700K. It's the new quad-core processor that has eight threads. It's four gigahertz, and it's, of course, set for DDR4. And it says here that it can do DDR3, and I believe there are some boards out there that actually can use the CPU and use DDR3. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, so we're gonna stick with the you know, DDR4 RAM. It does have integrated graphics and it looks like here the display resolution for those integrated graphics is 4096 by 2304. If you're buying a CPU like this that's unlocked, that's overclockable, there's absolutely no reason to use the integrated unless you know you can't afford the $1,500 budget, then I guess you can avoid the, avoid the GPU and stick with the internal for now, but that will hinder on your performance for what kind of performance you want from your games. Going from there, these CPUs do not come with a cooler. So, of course, we're doing the Corsair. Wow, I almost messed up the name there. Corsair Hydro Series H90. The reason I went with the H90 and not the H80 because it gives you a little more better cooling because it's 140 millimeter instead of 120 millimeter. The reason I didn't go with like an H100 or a 110 is because, well, basically meeting that budget goal. So, we have a set of 1500. If we went with one of those other ones, it would be twenty to forty dollars more. So we stuck with the H90. This will do its job that it needs to do. Even if you need to overclock, this will definitely do it. Now, of course, as I stated, we're not going to be using the integrated graphics. So we're going to go with a dedicated GPU, and that GPU is the EVGA GeForce GTX 970 four gigabyte card, NVIDIA card. Nothing really much else to say. Uh, if you know tech, you know the NVIDIA cards are basically the best in the market when it comes down to it not saying anything against amd we are amd fans we love amd it's just when it comes down to performance intel and nvidia are definitely ahead when it comes down to performance now that being said you know you can always argue the fact on money and performance so but regardless 
NVIDIA with an Intel CPU, you're going to get great performance. You can definitely do two of these later down the road if you want. So you have that SLI to get that boost in performance. But a 970 uh, 4 gigabyte card from EVGA, it has the dual fans. It's great cooling. EVGA is a great company when it comes down to motherboards and GPUs. This is definitely my recommendation to you guys. Going from there, of course, we're going to do the RAM. The RAM that we're going to go with is the G-Sco Ripjaws V-Series. It's 16 gigabyte kit, and it is the DDR4, and it's 3200 megahertz. Now, there's a few things that some people are going to say that are not necessary. And sure, I can see where you're going with that, but here's my statement to you. Why wouldn't I want better? If I can have it, why wouldn't I want it better? Why would I just want it just good enough? simple as that people are going to say 16 gigabytes is there's no reason for 16 gigabytes 8 gigabytes is plenty especially if you're just going to be gaming i disagree with you look at battlefront look at any other game that's come out towards the end of the year and coming into this year those kind of games are minimum requirements are 8 gigabytes recommended requirements is 16 gigabytes the reason they're recommended well simply is because if you want the best graphics to play at you want the 16 gigabytes so that's not true anymore. Plus multitasking, if you have multiple tabs like I do right now, multiple multiple uh, browsers with multiple tabs, that's all gonna use up memory. I can use up easily just in browser alone up to eight gigs. It's just, it's not plenty enough. I get it, you wanna argue the statement that it is, but it's not. 16 gigabytes is the way to go. I don't recommend any less to anybody else. Anybody that I know personally, that I know during business, and even for myself or Dalbor, we all agree on this. Now, why 3200 megahertz? You'll never need that. You never know that. You never know what you might get yourself into. With a system like this, you can do gaming, you can do video editing, you can do a lot, a lot of other things because this CPU definitely allows you to do that. This quad core with eight threads and four gigahertz uh, definitely allows you to do that. Plus, if you overclock it, you you have multiple options. You don't have to use it just for gaming and you don't have to use it just for rendering. Now there are better processors for, you know, rendering and stuff like that, but this one can definitely do it all. So that's where we're going with this. It is an all black, um, all black RAM stick. You can definitely pick different options as you can see here. Uh, looks like black, gray, red, and a light, like a silver. Yeah, so it says silver, that's gray. Uh, I went with all black just once again because depending on what color screen you want to go with you can always mess with that so i went with all black now going to hard drives the first things first is we definitely needed to do an ssd ever since i've started using ssds i cannot go back to a mechanical drive as a boot syst or as a boot drive just not possible it's too slow programs open not fast enough they open decent but not fast enough for me ssd is the way to go and I recommend this to everybody, to everybody. Everybody who sits there and says, oh, my computer's taking too long or it's taking too long to turn on. Once you get an SSD, that's gonna feel like on every other computer that doesn't have an SSD. So definitely go with this. Now, this is a 512 gigabyte SSD, which is plenty for most of your software and your OS, uh, maybe a few other things in there, but this is gonna be a primary, just making sure that you have enough for your OS. And uh, I install a lot of different software, so I wanna make sure that I'm at a good sitting point. 512 gigabytes is perfect at that point. It is Mushkin. Mushkin is a great brand. They've been doing RAM and SSDs for quite some time now, especially the RAM aspect of it. They're a uh, very well recommended company throughout multiple people that do tech. So this is definitely the way to go. Of course, 512 gigabytes isn't enough, so why not, with our $1,500 budget, throw in a storage drive? Now, this we definitely did go mechanical because, let's be serious, right now, to get the most storage it's and for the money is going to be a mechanical drive. We went with a Toshiba 2 terabyte drive here, 60 more, 64 megabyte cache, and of course, 7200 RPM, SATA 6 drive. Dalbor has a four or five terabyte drive of this and when we tested the read and write speeds on this thing It is amazing now. It's not SSD amazing, but for a mechanical drive It's absolutely amazing The reason I went with also with Toshiba is because it had one of the best ratings for a two terabyte drive compared to Seagate Also as well, it is the better priced of all of them 
when it comes down to performance and uh, of course uh, how well it runs and uh, you know the failure rate of it and stuff like that if you look at the Seagate reviews it doesn't have it, it has three out of five eggs and it looks like on Amazon it has three out of five stars as well the Toshiba always on Amazon, on Newegg, and on other places always has a very good rating. Now, there is Western Digital, but the reason I didn't want the Western Digital is because, honestly, I didn't want to pay $10, $15 more for the same product. Some people will argue, oh, it's a better product. Honestly, I've had so many thrift and hard drives, and they've all acted exactly the same, ran exactly the same. The speed's virtually exactly the same when it comes down to mechanical. Of course, if you're comparing a... 64 meg cache 7200 rpm drive if you take all three of those you'll see that the performance and all that is very close to the same so toshiba is the way we went on this no more need to be set on that let's go into next part what's going to power all this we went with the seasonic m12 2 750 it's a 750 watt power supply it is sli ready of course it is a 80 plus bronze certified power supply and it is fully modular what that means is that you won't have cables in your case that you don't need you just use the ones that you need to plug up your stuff and that's it the rest of the cables can be put away in a drawer and they don't have to take up space in your in your case making it tough to maybe route everywhere or close up or have that rat's nest sitting at the bottom none of that is necessary with a fully modular power supply now i will say this of course in the 80 plus bronze the reason that's recommended i don't know you know maybe some of you don't know why you would want uh certification on that but that'll make make sure that your make sure that your power supply runs the most efficient way and it's you know it's it's a properly set up power supply for the power that it's providing where a lot of the other ones that don't have the certifications they're not the greatest power supplies especially if you're going to be overclocking and stuff like that which this cpu you can do with now i want do want to say this if you're going to add an additional graphics card to this build later down the road or additional hard drives or both an additional card and additional hard drives and you're going to overclock you might want to look into a thousand watt power supply because if you're doing all that you're adding more power consumption so it does need that power some of you might say out there oh but it doesn't need a thousand watts well, there's been already tests out there that proves that wrong. If you're going to be overclocking and you're going to have two cards, you definitely want a 1,000-watt power supply. Make sure it's certified, 80+, plus doesn't matter, gold, bronze, platinum, whatever. The full modular thing, that's completely up to you. That's more of a preference thing. Uh, I like fully modular just because I hate dealing with all the wires. But that doesn't mean that the power supply you choose has to be. Just make sure it's certified and it's got enough power. But this is definitely a good one to go with. Seasonic is a great brand when it comes down to power supplies. That's it, enough said. Next thing is the case. I went with the Rosewell Rise just because, honestly, we do like our Rosewell Stealth. We love it a lot. We actually give it our recommendation all the time. It is a We did a review on it. got nothing but great reviews. It's got plenty of room to work with. So why not go with another Rosewell case? This is a full tower case. Now it says gaming computer case, but... There's nothing really gaming about it. It's a very, very clean design. It looks like it's all plastic from bezel. At least it is. Uh, I, uh, when I say all plastic, I mean the front bezel. I don't mean the entire case is plastic. The front bezel is plastic. The reason I like this particular case is because of this front mesh. Uh, I don't like cases that have a uh, just a cover. And then the people are going to try to tell you that there's going to be plenty of air coming from the sides, from the little sides gaps on the sides uh, that's going to give you plenty of air to go into your case i can't believe that so i don't accept that so i prefer a case that has the open mesh in the front that way i know it's getting all the air it can possibly get through and it's being filtered to the mesh grill that probably has a built-in air filter now i haven't personally reviewed this case or haven't taken a look at this case but it does have plenty of room to put in the h90 for liquid cooling add your hard drives and all that now from what I can tell, and I haven't really looked into this case that much, but it does not have as much room as I would like for additional storage. I don't know if that's something you can add on to from Rosewell or not. That's something I would have to look into. If not, then you can definitely go with a different case. Don't have one specifically filled, uh, picked out. 
but you can definitely look into like Corsair, Liam Lee, um, NZXT, any of those. Any of those companies have plenty of cases that are available that can uh, hold additional hard drives. So that's it. That's really it. This price completely comes into 1507.41. So we're just a little over that budget. We're seven dollars and forty-one seven cents over the fifteen hundred dollar budget. No, this budget does not include an OS just because you can get an OS in different ways from different people from different prices for free, even uh, depending on what OS you choose to go with. So that's why we haven't added that. Also, as well, it does not, of course, include a keyboard and mouse or a monitor. If that's something you're looking into, uh, we might do budget builds that include all that, but that might be later on. This is just for this is just us assuming that you already have a keyboard and mouse and a monitor. You're just looking to get a way better PC than what you have because you want to get into better gaming or streaming or editing, whatever it is. This is definitely what I would go with that's basically it there's really nothing much else to say we are going to be doing more budget builds since it is tax season time we will be doing more budget builds like this one we're going to be doing a 750 dollar budget build we might even go to a 600 dollar budget bill tax season's coming around some people might be looking to get a new system build a new system upgrade their system so that's why we're doing this. Hope you guys enjoy that. Make sure to subscribe to stay tuned to that. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Deuces.